South African bond market was relatively weaker today, tracking that weaker rand. The benchmark R186, as you can see there, bid at 9.16%, and that from yesterday is 9.125%. The middle dated R207, in the meantime, sitting at 8.54% from a previous close of 8.5%. Joining me uh, with more detail on what's playing out in this space is Vickers Furstenberg, Portfolio Manager at Future Growth Asset Management. Vickers, thanks so much for joining us on the line today. So ahead of today's bond auction, the commentary was that the weakness in the long end of the curve doesn't bode well, uh, wouldn't bode well for auction demand. Uh, what did play out at today's auction? Hi, Alicia. Um, actually, if you were interested in buying bonds for whatever reason, I mean, far better levels to buy this morning than, say, for instance, two weeks ago. So at the time of the auction, they've issued uh, three bonds. The um, once maturing 2032, 2037, and 48, um, the back end sure cleared about two points weaker than where the market was at the time, but it was like, you know, twice oversubscribed. Uh, the shorter one actually better, but um, just below markets and four times oversubscribed. If you look at where the market cleared uh, and, and where the market closed this, this afternoon, um, those trades are all in the money, slightly in the money. So not, not a bad auction at all. Yeah. Having said that, Vickers, foreign inflows into uh, South Africa's bond market, uh, which have uh, previously helped cushion the rand, uh, continued to reverse last week as uh, foreign investors sold, what, 3.7 billion rand off the assets. So what do you attribute to the kind of movement we are seeing in that space to right now? Is it uh, simply a case of, uh, you know, being high beta, whether it comes to uh, the bond market or the RAND for that matter? Yeah, I, I think definitely that. Um, and I think if we could zoom out again and look at the global picture, I mean, um, I think the fact is that fundamentals in many places are weak. I mean, years of weak economic growth have been propped up by extensive and successive rounds of banks, bank, central bank stimulus. I mean, we, we now sort of even entered this uncharted territory of negative interest negative real interest rates. So it's causing a lot of contradiction and confusing at times, and obviously that in turn will lead to volatile and unpredictable short-term swings in global risk appetite, and you've seen that. I mean, you mentioned global uh, or purchases by, by, by non-residents um, about, what was it, 40 billion year to date, and last week almost 4 billion sales, sales again. So really, it's, 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 if you look at what happened to data releases you know, from the U.S., the Eurozone, China in the last few days, um, it was like lukewarm at best. So obviously what happens is um, people then tend to sort of try and avoid what they see as risk. Let's factor in what's uh, unfolding here on home ground because Moody's decision to uh, hold our sovereign ratings steady, uh, not uh, you know, managing to support the markets for very long. The jury, it seems, still out on government's ability to actually uh, address the various structural issues that still burden the South African economy. But do you see this as a step in the right direction or are you not as convinced just yet? Well, I think the jury is still out, definitely. I mean, I think we should be grateful for what's happening in the background. Um, it's a pity. Uh, it hasn't really, you know, we haven't started doing this a few years ago for that matter. That's, that was the way to do it. And as we force into this position, we, we're not convinced, um, you know, it's, it's going to help us to avert an S&P downgrade. Um, I mean, we know S&P is, is, is here to make that announcement on the 3rd of June. So Moody's always sort of indicated that to them, you know, the, the SA sovereign debt is not sub-investment great quality. And obviously there's now that negative outlook. Um, and that still leaves the door open for them to downgrade us uh, one notch or so uh, by year end. Um, if they see that, or if they're not happy with the progress uh, in terms of those issues that we need to address. And amongst a host of other factors that, uh, you know, uh, one of the factors that's weighing on the local unit right now, and of course that is expected to fan inflation moving forward. What are your expectations as far as uh, the Saab's decision on interest rates is concerned come next week? I think the central bank has done okay in terms of tightening policy, 200 basis points from the recent low. Um, I, I, I think it makes sense for them to just maybe pause uh, at the next meeting. And I don't think that necessarily relates to what's happening 
in the market at the moment because markets are quite volatile and it's really difficult for a single bank to sort of you know base their their, their calls on short term volatility. So I don't think the, the the outlook in terms of the upside risk to inflation has changed a lot. I mean, that's still on the table. Um, in fact, I mean, we all know that we're probably more concerned about weak growth than rising inflation at the moment, and that makes life a bit difficult for the central bank. Well, Vickers, let's leave it there. Thanks so much for having joined us on the line this evening. Vickers Furstenberg is Portfolio Manager at Future Growth Asset Management.